It's 8 p.m. in Banjur and a warm welcome to the news. But first, the headlines. President Jammeh doles out more than 2 million dalasi to members of the Christian Council as part of his traditional Easter gift to Christians. UNDP Administrator Helen Clark hails her organization's continuous partnership with the government of the Gambia. Tension increases in the South China Sea as rival countries assert territorial claim over a raft of islands and rocks in the disputed area. And thousands protest in the heart of Brussels amid increasing anti-immigrant sentiments in the wake of the deadly terror attacks in Belgium. Well, viewers, these and other stories coming ahead this half hour. I'm your presenter, Chanin Jite. Welcome back. The Christian Council has taken delivery of 2.3 million dalasi from President Jame for the Easter celebrations. The Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs, Aja Dr. Aisunjai Saidi, presented the gift. Winifred Nicole covered that ceremony as well as the presentation of 700,000 dalasi from the President, earmarked for the upcoming state opening of the National Assembly, scheduled for Thursday, 31st March 2016. However, we hope to bring you that story later on on the news. The United Nations Development Program is one of the key organs of the United Nations system that continues to partner with the Gambia government in its development objectives. The partnership, according to the new UNDP administrator, Helen Elizabeth Clark, will continue. The New Zealand-born diplomat was speaking after concluding a closed-door meeting with Vice President Aja Dr. Aisvindjai Saidi, in which the UNDP top official also commended President Jame for the decision to ban FGMC in the Gambia. Here's an excerpt. Uh, we're very happy to be working very closely with the government of the Gambia on many things, uh, including uh, big initiatives with uh, UNDP, UNFPA and UNICEF uh, around gender equality and supporting uh, the very important work that the minister and the officials are doing. I've also uh, commended the Gambia for its groundbreaking move to ban female genital mutilation. We're very, very happy with that. We know there's a lot of sensitization work uh, to do which we would also want to support but the f major step has been taken uh, which is the uh, the government's decision and the parliament decision so uh, we're very pleased to support this work thank you so much thank you UNDP Administrator Helen Clark, they are speaking to our Babuka Sengon shortly after concluding a closed-door meeting with Vice President Jai Sedi on the sidelines of the CSW60 meeting in New York. The state opening of the National Assembly, which is expected to be presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Professor Al-Haji Dr. Yahya A.J.J. Jame Babili Mansa, President of the Islamic Republic of the Gambia, for the 2016 legislative year, is slated for Thursday, 31st March 2016 at 5 p.m. prompt. This exercise in pursuance of the provisions of Section 71 Sub 1 of the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, in which the President is required to at least once in each year address a session of the National Assembly on the policies of the government. Accordingly, His Excellency the President of the Republic shall address the session at 5 p.m. prompt. The Chancellor of Bunim Ward recently presided over the disbursement of funds amounting to 30,000 dalasi to members of the Bunim Mauritania APRCI Company Association. The triplong event also saw the handing over of football jerseys to seven football teams and the inauguration of a public standpipe at Bunim Garage. Aisa Tujata has more on that story. <laughs> The package will no doubt come as a big relief to the beneficiaries. The TAP, for instance, will help guarantee those using the garage a reliable supply of potable water and reduce the incidence of waterborne diseases. The cash, according to sources, will be used as a revolving loan scheme to help the women set up small businesses. They are expected to pay back the loan after six months to give others the chance to access the facility. The justice will no doubt come in handy when Councillor Sleman Jami makes good on his pledge to organize a football tournament. 
the public relations officer of Bundum Garage, Jebel Choi, held the efforts of the councillor. Choi told the gathering he is working alongside his colleagues at the garage to standardize operations. Choi lamented the way the garage was run and promised to erect new facilities for the comfort of passengers. Salman Jai, who represented the mayor of Kanifi municipality, commended the youth of Bundung for their steadfastness in complementing President Jame's development efforts. Jai advised the youth to continue playing an active role in national development. Adam Ambai, a youth representative, advised his fellow young people to refocus their attention on the Gambia and capitalize on the opportunities that abound, warning against irregular migration. Aji Amijata commended Councillor Suleiman Jame, calling him a hard-working man, but not without urging the beneficiaries of the loan facility to avoid diverting the funds. Aisa Tujata, GRTS. Summit to Upper Basic and Secondary School on Saturday inaugurated three well-furnished structures that housed eight classrooms, offices, staff room as well as a staff quarters, library, internet cafe and a computer lab. The project that is funded by Friends from Holland Operation, a charitable organization called Dauda Foundation, has been render rendering support to the village for the past nine years. Kedit Jalo reports. <laughs> It was a joyous moment for the principal, staff, students of Somita Upper and Senior Secondary School, the community, and Regional Education Directorate as they witnessed the completion of a project that seeks to create a more conducive learning environment for the students. A member of the Somita Lower Basic Senior Management Committee, Zakaria Koli, and the Chief of Fonyi Berefet, Alhaji Junkun Kamara, held down the foundation for the numerous humanitarian interventions made in the village. They do challenge the students to make best use of the opportunity and excel in their educational career. Get yourself a dream and never ever let your dream get away. This, according to the Regional Education Director Omar Jata, is a historic moment in the educational calendar of the district and the village in particular. On my behalf and on the behalf of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, I wish to first and foremost express my heartfelt appreciation and profound thanks to all those that have contributed in no small measure in the construction of these magnificent structures that are aimed at complementing government's effort in the provision of accessible, affordable, and quality education for all its citizenry. The principal of Somita Upper and Senior Secondary School, Koyo Kande, was appreciative of a development he described as a dream come true. Kande recounted the difficulties he had gone through before the Dauda Foundation came to their aid. It has been very difficult for me during the time, from the time I came to the school. Furniture was a great problem. It was during that very moment of my suffering. I was one day invited by the former chairman of the VDC, one Ibrahim Sonyang from Somita, that they have friends called Dada Foundation. They are supposed to come to Somita. I was asked to join the welcoming team, which I did. The chairman of the Dada Foundation, Eric and wife Maria too, were very concerned with the issues I presented. That was a blessing for me. Eric said, I'm not promising, but we will see what to do. The school principal presented a desktop and a printer to OB Engineering Company for a good construction job. And three other schools, namely Sutu Xinjiang, Lower Basic School, Kanuma, and Kandungo Basic Cycle School with desktops, sporting gear, and a trophy, each for their support during difficult times. The team leader from the Netherlands, Eric, described Somita as their second home, saying the number of times they visited and stayed in the village over the past nine years enabled them to know the needs of the villagers which they are bent on addressing. We try to make a cooperation together with the people of Somita and I hope we succeed in it. We started the microfinance, it's very perfect. We started the market hall, the clinic and the garden. But they are not our projects. They are the projects of the people of Sumita. Empowerment, capacity building and ownership. Especially ownership is very important because the projects, they are not our projects, but the projects of the people of Sumita.
The team leader also encouraged them to venture into adult literacy, citing the importance of education in improving socioeconomic conditions of people and a nation at large. With good, well-equipped structures in place and a three-phase electricity supply up and running, indications are that this school is set to benefit from more philanthropic gestures from their Dutch friends as they now intend to furnish the library with some 2,000 books. Kadija Tujalo, GRTS News. And now going back to our earlier mentioned story, the Christian Council has taken delivery of 2.3 million delasi from President Jame for the Easter celebrations. The Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs, Ajah Dr. Aysudin Jaisedi, presented the gift. Winifred Nicole covered that ceremony as well as the presentation of 700,000 delasi from the President, earmarked for the up common state opening of the National Assembly scheduled for Thursday, 31st March 2016. 2.3 million delasi donated to the Gambia Christian community by President Jame was handed over to the Christian Council by the Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs, Aja Dr. Isetunyai Seidi. So I want to definitely on his behalf thank the Gambia Christian Council and the entire Christian community on behalf, through the Council for the wonderful work you've been doing in this country. Let's start with that, first and foremost. You didn't only come to preach us about the Bible, but as you tell us the Bible on the one hand, you tell us about development on the other. We have witnessed that over the years. All of us in the Gambia, since we were young, up to the time we grew up, we know that most of us went through missionary schools, mission schools as we call them. It's either Anglican schools, Methodist schools, or Catholic schools in this country. You look at the Islamic side, of course, there are other uh, missionary schools as well, mission schools. But like I said, the Christian community provided services irrespective of whether you are Muslim or a Christian, you went through their schools, you, were, you also benefited from their health services, from their agricultural services, vocational training services. Officials from the Christian Council described the gesture as a symbol of the cordial ties between the Gambia's Christian and Muslim communities. It's only, it's a little bit less than two months since I sat in the chair there and you were there. It was early February and you were assuring us, the Christians of the country, that you would still look after us. And this is a most wonderful example and affirmation of those words that you spoke just seven weeks ago here. I don't know how to say thank you once again. Uh, we will do our best to use that great gift of money in the right way, particularly focusing on the poor and the needy. Also present at the presentation ceremony were cabinet ministers, national assembly members, sector general and the director general of GRTS. Declaring the Gambia as an Islamic state had brought in doubts and also we had a lot of prophecies or prophets of doom had said different things and of course it was also a cause of concern. But I believe declaring the Gambia an Islamic state and continue to live side by side peacefully and in love and harmony is a shining example, a great example to the rest of the world. And I believe the Gambia will be a case study for a lot of other countries that are definitely looking for peace. That's why the Holy Bible teaches us in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17, Paul said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, which means it should be a spiritual world and not a material world. The Holy Bible also tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. Let us practice submission to God first before addition. And furthermore, the kingdom of God. The Bible also teaches us in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 21. 
that the kingdom of God is within you. Let us treat each other in holiness and in a good manner. On the same day at State House, the Vice President presented to the National Assembly $700,000. The cash donated by President Jame is earmarked for the upcoming state opening of the National Assembly. Our concern at the National Assembly as an authority and, and representatives was um, the cost of uh, having another state opening, of course, successfully done. If you see the turnout on Thursday, and uh, people came from all sides of the country, from You will think again whether we'll be successful enough to get that crowd. Why we will think whether it will be possible is the cost. Because um, transporting people from all parts of the country. We are not surprised, Your Excellency. Because over the years, the, His Excellency has been very supportive of the National Assembly in all spheres. Uh, we want to allay the fears of the public and the outcries in town that some people uh, alluded that this is the second time that the president is violating the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this, this is most misleading mm -hmm. as the only Constitution only provides that the president will address parliaments once in a year. We could be any time in the year. One of the things I also wanted to talk about is the fact that we should not allow ourselves as a government and as a people to be distracted. Occasionally, situations do occur that are beyond our control. But when those situations occur, we should not allow distract, distract, detractors to distract us from our cause. We all know for a fact that the Constitution provides that the President must address Parliament at least once. It doesn't say when. It doesn't say on what date. It says at least once. He may choose to address Parliament two or three times, but he has a responsibility to address Parliament at least once. It doesn't have to be at, on the opening of Parliament. It just has become a, 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 a tradition. So when distract, detractors start distracting us, and start sending out misinformation. It is important to set the record straight. The Vice President and the Foreign Affairs Minister also seized the opportunity to emphasize that the recent declaration of the Gambia as an Islamic state means nothing, that Muslims and Christians in the Gambia will continue to coexist. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Winifred Nicole. Well, with that, we'll take our first break. When we return, we take a look at news from beyond our borders. We'll be right back. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Rewi Gambia Kailen ma digal len lima mos ba tax xamte ko ba tax ma di len ko wax muy lan muy ñaari xet ci juus si nga xamne ni ñoy xew ci jamono ana jamono marché jamono muy lan muy mina juus ak lu mina juus sen tafay ben la safna te lima ci gëna neex moy amu ben aftertaste ñu ne bo demé ci mina juus di nga am li nga xamne moy mango ak orange indi li nga xamne moy vinto amna ñu mina coconut amna ñu mina mango amna ñu mina pineapple amna ñit ñu mina strawberry waye it amna yenen yo xamne ni ñu ci biir te it mo nga am ca keraba shop nek ca banjul jakaro school ba ñu nan ko kg5 bi te it nga dem sa serakuna ca julde waye ekati sa telephone nga call wa keraba shop bi 794-8486 bi te it nga call 994-1786 bi te it ca serakuna ca julde nga call ko ci 9825425 jarama wa keraba shop a power struggle continued to play out in the South China Sea. Several governments have long claimed different sectors and now a group of islands. Rocks really are at the center of the dispute. The territory is guarded by Taiwan but also claimed by China. We have more in this CNN report. The contested waters of the South China Sea, seen from a Taiwanese military plane. 
And this is what greets you when you land at Taiping, an island controlled by Taiwan. Taiping is a tiny island. It basically runs the length of this runway. The Taiwanese government first laid claim to this place more than half a century ago. But this is the very first time, the government says, that journalists have been invited to see it firsthand. And it's at a time when tensions are ratcheting up here in the South China Sea. At least six different countries have competing claims for this body of water. But China claims almost all of it. And to cement China's claim, Beijing has been building a series of man-made islands atop reefs and atolls in the hotly disputed Spratly Archipelago. It's making the neighbors nervous. We are opposed to uh, militarization or uh, uh, military expansionism in the area. Enter the U.S. Navy. We caught up with the aircraft carrier John C. Stennis shortly after it sailed through the South China Sea, performing an unmistakable show of U.S. force. Just being there in the South China Sea shows that you know we believe we have the right to operate international waters, uh, all ships, uh, not just military vessels, but civilian vessels. Washington calls these visits freedom of navigation operations. They clearly irritate the Chinese. Uh, this is the Chinese Navy, this is the Chinese Navy, please go away quickly. Last year, CNN accompanied a U.S. Navy spy plane that flew over China's man-made islands. Go, go! Beijing expressed outrage, issuing formal protests and calling these operations a very serious provocation. So where do smaller claimants like Taiwan fit in? <laughs> On Taiping, officials showed off the island's chickens and goats, as well as supplies of fresh water. If Taiwan proves Taiping can sustain human life, then the Taiwanese can make the case for a potentially lucrative 200 nautical mile economic exclusion zone around the island. Amid the contest for control of the South China Sea, Taiwan is trying to demonstrate that it too is a player and should not be overlooked. Meanwhile, other small countries like Vietnam and the Philippines are reaching out to the U.S. for help at counterbalancing China as it continues to flex its naval muscle in this contested body of water. A place that feels like a tropical paradise is instead becoming part of a much bigger regional power struggle. So you saw an anti-immigrant protest at the site of the Brussels Memorial, Memorial highlighting the rift among Belgians. There were similar tensions in Paris in the aftermath of those attacks. CNN Simon Mawson reports. Had a lucky escape. He missed both the attacks at the airport and metro by minutes. He's in Brussels on a business trip and has barely left his hotel since the bombings. But not just because he's afraid of terrorist attacks. If I stay in the hotel for two days, I even did not go out because I, I was scared what will be the people's reaction because of my beard or because I'm Muslim, I'm from Pakistan. Second, I was scared with the, because the control, the forces, the police, they're doing their job. I'm not saying they're doing it for the people's safety. But I don't want to be in that trauma situation where they will be keeping me for four to five hours. His wife and family were concerned about racial attacks and a backlash against Muslims. His company advised him not to travel. And I was scared because of the bag. If I go from one train station to another with my suitcase and with my appearance. Samoon's fears are not unfounded. On Sunday, right-wing protesters charged through the memorial in Place de la Bourse, stamping on flowers, raising Nazi salutes. Just a day before, members of Brussels' Muslim community came out to show solidarity with their fellow citizens, laying bouquets of flowers for the victims. Muslim mothers brought their children to light candles. For me, it's immoral and shameful. Not all Muslims are terrorists. We are against terrorists. We are nice Muslims. 
We are human beings. Our relationship with God is separate. We're not allowed to judge others. We should put our spiritual side aside and work together. Build together. There are two types of Muslims. There are those who are not good and those who are good. We are not all the same. This little girl wrote a message saying, I'm against terrorism. Why all this war? Declarations and questions too big for a small child. For some in this community, it's unbearable that Muslims could carry out such a heinous attack. It hurts. These are innocent human beings that are dead. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't kill innocent people. They haven't done anything. It's not our religion that kills. It's got nothing to do with it. Islam is a peaceful religion. Amongst the flags of countries that too have suffered from terror attacks, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkey, France, a banner above them all reads, not in the name of Islam. Simon Morsin, CNN, Brussels. You're watching GRT's News at 8 and it's time now for our second break. When we return, we take a look at sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's two games and no win for the Scorpions' new coach Sang Dong after his Scorpion side were held to a disappointing goalless draw at the Independence Stadium in Bacau. The hosts had a couple chances to edge the Group M fixture, but were left to settle for the team still made in front of personate home support. That may still prop up the four-team group with group leaders Cameroon and heavyweight South Africa aiming to assert control over the leadership of the group. We will have more on that plus reaction from the camp in our subsequent bulletins. And from sports, we turn our attention to the weather report courtesy of the Central Focus Office. The Gambia is endowed with a wonderful landscape full of baobab trees. Like its Cape Point in Bacal, it is one of the most exotic scenery in the world. The baobab tree is a symbol of resilience, wisdom, and resourcefulness. For the baobab tree provides good food in times of hunger, rents its back for medications, and its sap for glue. In the Gambia, there is a company like the baobab tree, 100% African and purely Gambian in all aspects. In know-how, design, value, capital, and management. That company is Elton. Elton, employing hundreds of Gambians and proudly associating itself with development in the Gambia. Elton, side by side with the Gambia. Hello, good evening and welcome to the weather forecast. The Gambia has been sunny and warm during the past 24 hours. And for the satellite in this source, convective cloud over the central and eastern part of Africa. Tonight, the weather is expected to be partly cloudy, cool, and occasionally breezy. Similar conditions are expected to prevail tomorrow morning, especially over the coastal areas, thereafter becoming warm and sunny in the afternoon. So this means we mainly be northwesterly in direction and the speed will vary between 5 and 20 kilometers per hour. Minimum temperatures across the country will be 18 degrees over the greater value, 17 over west coast and north bank, 20 over lower river and upper river region, while 21 over central river region. And for the maximum temperatures will be 33, 32 degrees over the greater value, 38 over west coast and north bank, 39 over lower river and central river region, while 40 over upper river region. Low tide will be 0.5 meters at 8 a.m. and 0.6 meters at 8 p.m. High tide will be 1.4 meters at 1 a.m. and also at 2 p.m. We will be 1 to 2 meters northwest as this wells. The sun will rise at 3 minutes after 7 in the morning and set at 9, 18 minutes after 7 in the evening. That was the forecast. Thanks for watching and good night. That was Ami Cham with the weather and that brings us to the end of this newscast. But before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of our day's main stories. President Jame has doled out more than two million delasi to members of the Christian Council as part of his traditional Easter gift to the Christian community. 
UNDP Administrator Helen Clark has hailed her organization's continuous partnership with the government of the Gambia. The UNDP top official was speaking after a meeting with the Vice President Njai Sedi on the sidelines of the CSW meeting. Tensions is increasing in the South China Sea as rival countries assert territorial claim over a raft of islands and rocks in the disputed area. And thousands have protested in the heart of Brussels amid increasing anti-immigrant sentiments in the wake of the deadly terror attacks in Belgium. Well, viewers, that was all for this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay with us. And I'm your presenter, Tenen GT. Join us at 10 p.m. for another bulletin. Thank you.